The following segment is sponsored by Daniel A. White and Associates and does not necessarily reflect the views of this station or Forever Media Incorporated. Rick Jensen on 1150 AM, 1017 FM, WDEL. Well, Dan White's been a financial planner for, gosh, uh, well over 25 years. I'm a client as well, and I love to hear what he has to say after the news at 1.30 every Wednesday because there's always some good advice, and quite often it's something rather complicated. And I think, wow, good to know. I'll make a note, and I'm never going to read about it again. I'll just let someone like Dan handle it for me. Dan, how are you, buddy? I'm doing well, Rick. How are you doing? Uh, I'm okay. I saw this email from you this morning, and I, I said, um, I don't even understand what this is. <laughs> so <laughs> here, here's the question. Uh, how does revocation on divorce law work with ERISA plans? All right, so I know ERISA plans are like your medical, your dental, your 401k, things like that. And the federal government oversees that just to make sure that uh, no laws are being broken and people aren't getting screwed, things like that. Also, stock bonuses, profit sharing, and pension plans basically are, are a big, huge uh, part of the ERISA plans. All right, so did I get that right yeah. so far? <clears throat> yeah, you're right on point. All right. Now, divorce. So, so yeah, it's whatever. complicated. And there's um, and there's a couple of Supreme Court decisions on this, but it's 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 fairly simple what you need to do. But what if you had your IRA and you named your spouse your primary de beneficiary? You got divorced. You didn't change it, and then you die. Who inherits the IRA benefits? Um, well, if you live, well, that's a good question. I thought right? you. I thought you, yeah, okay. Sorry, I took that literally. I didn't realize it was rhetorical. I thought it was a quiz. Right. Okay. Go ahead. So. So if you live in one of, there's 26 states that have revocation on divorce laws, your ex-spouse would automatically be removed as the beneficiary upon divorce. Your IRA would go to your contingent beneficiary, or if you didn't have one, to the default beneficiary under your IRA agreement. And in 2018, there was a Supreme Court decision in, uh, in Minnesota. They approved the Minnesota revocation on divorce laws that applied to life insurance. In this case, uh, the guy purchased a life insurance policy, named his wife the primary beneficiary, and two children from a prior marriage as contingents. They subsequently divorced, but he never changed the beneficiary by the time he died. The Supreme Court ruling was that the life insurance proceeds went to the two children since the wife was removed by the revocation on divorce law. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Dan. As soon as you said Supreme Court, I thought, okay, this is ugly. So you got these two yeah. kids from a previous marriage. She, uh, the 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 uh, divorcee, the most recent divorcee, wants the money. So right. she must have been suing, filed lawsuits, saying, "No, the they, the kids can't have it. I'm going to get the money." And it went all to the Supreme, all the way to the Supreme Court, and she all lost. All the way to the Supreme Court, and she lost. Oh, yeah. that's that's ugly. So that's that's IRA, and that's and that's life insurance. But does it apply? You know, if they apply to IRA, shouldn't they also apply to 401Ks and ERISA plans? Well, not so fast. Really? Now, in, in 74, Congress included a preemption clause that says that ERISA supersedes any state law that relates to company retirement plans. The purpose of this clause was to protect companies doing business in more than one state, think like Walmart or somebody like that, from having to comply with a patchwork of different state laws. Oh. So the Supreme Court has interpreted this very broadly. In 2001, they had a case. The guy named his wife, Donna, as beneficiary under his Boeing company pension plan, which is obviously an ERISA plan. They divorced. He never changed his beneficiary designation, and then he dies. The Supreme Court ruled that the Washington State revocation on divorce law was superseded by ERISA because it clearly relates to ERISA plans. For that reason, the, the ex-wife was still entitled to receive the pension plan benefits. That's confusing. It is. I know. So although the revocation on divorce laws can apply to IRAs, which aren't covered by ERISA, they can't apply to ERISA cover plans, but... The big picture is this. You don't have to worry about whether your state has an ROD law or not. Just make sure you keep your beneficiaries up to date. Yeah, right? <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> but it's such so bizarre. But the federal government overrides the state governments in this particular case. Um, right, with a risk of plans, but not with IRAs. Not with like, IRAs, yeah. And so what was the deal in Washington, though? But that was an ERISA plan, though, wasn't it? But she still got the money? It was no, it was just life insurance. Oh, oh, gotcha. Okay, yeah, it was life insurance. No, no, I'm sorry. Under 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 the under the Boeing company case, it was in Washington, 
But the, the Supreme Court ruled ERISA rules over the state law. Gotcha. So I thought the Boeing case was in Washington or something, the state of Washington. Yeah, first. so she got she got the pension plan, even though she wasn't the beneficiary. What? That's the, that doesn't so she, No, she sense. was the beneficiary, but he died. Yeah. Okay, and he never changed it. And because it was an ERISA plan, they said, okay, you, you're still entitled to it. Okay, yeah. Bizarre. Even though the state law would have said no. Right. Yeah, but on uh, RISA, on RISA overruled the state law. So. This is bizarre. But again, it gets very complicated. But again, what's the what's the takeaway? So when you when you divorce, update your beneficiary form. Ah, I don't want to. I don't feel like it. That's <laughs> that's what millions of people say. Ah, whatever. I don't. I don't. Do I have to go online to do that? What a pain in the butt. I don't know. Yeah. I, I have to sit down at the keyboard. I had to go look up my password. Oh, I don't know my password. I had to change my password. God, you know what? I don't want to do that. I'm going to go make dinner for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> you know? when, there's money, when there's money involved, this is where it gets kind of, kind of, you know. Well, you've had some situations. I mean, you've been a financial planner for well over 25 years, and I know you yeah. focus on uh, retirement income for people, but you've had some situations, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've had, uh, we've had quite a few over the years, I mean, where... I remember one case, the same thing. It was it was a divorce situation. The guy died. I think he had changed the beneficiary. It was kind of getting contested by the first wife. I mean, you know, it gets it gets really deep in the woods, you know. Yeah, and and I and I see also these stories about uh, you have siblings arguing because one wants more than the other one, uh, and then the other one's. Getting, well, and you know what happens is I've had people say, "Oh, I'm going to name one of my kids as the as the beneficiary." I'm like, "Well, why not all four? Oh, the one would the one will split it up." I'm like, "Oh, really?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck you with really that, right? So you know, and 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 you know that's putting a lot on the kid. You know, to to do that because you know they might be married, and you know things get things get weird. Things when change, money yeah. Involved, yeah, you know? my my yeah. brother's very lucky. My dad passed, and we, I had the documentation showing that we are both fifty fifty beneficiaries, right? right? Even though I cared for him the last twelve years, did all kind of stuff, but I love my brother, and I said, dude, you know, you're out in California, don't worry about it. And uh, and so I had all this documentation. Well, anyway, he passes, and uh, then I learned that. For some reason, the plan managers is a big company didn't have that didn't have the documentation. They only had an old one that had only me as a beneficiary. Right. So I told my brother go pound sand, and no, I didn't. Uh, so you, <laughs> so now here's here's the here's the pain. The pain is that it was um, it was all into a rollover retirement IRA that Dad had, and you know it, it wasn't like a life changing amount of money. It just made me a thousand there. So, <laughs> so what I did was I said, okay, I, um, I, I contacted the plan and I said, I'm going to take out half the money and I want you to withhold state and federal taxes. They said, okay. Yep. They sent me a yep. check. Right. And I said that to my brother and I said, we'll do taxes, see what happens. Uh, yada, yada, yada. He said, thank you. I said, uh, well, darn tootin' you're, uh, you're thanking me because so many times this stuff doesn't work that way. So I gave him half that stuff, and now we're each a thousand there. <laughs> if it was, and if it was real money, um, like well, everything's real money these days, seriously. But if if it was like you know millions of bucks, I still would have done the same thing. Just had to pay the accountants yeah. more money. Yeah, I had a situation recently where the uh, the husband and wife, the husband died. It was a second marriage. And he had clearly named beneficiaries. He had he had the wife, I think, down as forty percent, and the two kids from the first marriage is thirty percent. And still, the kids were the kids were fighting, you know, fighting the stepmom over it, even though it was pretty clear, you know, how he had intended it. But I mean, it's you know, this is this is the nature of the beast. Like I said, when there's money involved, people people get a little squirrely. Did they hate the stepmom from day one? Uh, I think it's safe to say they won't be breaking bread at Thanksgiving anymore. Or were they even beforehand? Uh, yeah, that See, I, I often know, wonder, does that uh, mean like there's such animosity that I don't care, I'll pay the lawyer $5,000, I hate her. You know, that sort of right, thing. Right, you know? right, exactly. And that's no. why you got to protect yourself. And Dan, you're very, very good at helping people do that, protect themselves so that they actually get what they really want to do. So I appreciate that. Yep. Right, man. Dan White, Dan White and Associates, give him a call at 888-690-8820, 888-690-8820, two offices, Mill, uh, Middletown, and then right over uh, the state line on Route 202. Also, the host of On the Money.
heard right here on WDEL Sunday mornings at 7. What's on the show this weekend? This weekend, the topic is uh, is Social Security. I mean, ignorance uh, is is bliss, not when it comes to Social Security. Um, it pays to know the rules so that you can maximize your benefits, and we're going to talk about that um, on Sunday morning, all about Social Security. But isn't the shortcut for just to wait as long as you can? Uh, not not always. Sometimes that is the case, uh, to wait as long as possible, but there are circumstances where you might want to take it early. Wow, cup of coffee, 7 in the morning, 11.50 a.m., 101.7 FM, WDEL, streaming live at WDEL.com, on the money, Dan White. Good talk. Thanks, man. Have a great day, Rick. Oh, you go, Phil's.